Alright, hello everybody. I am Snap, or well, Ashton Snap, and today I'm doing, uh, my, well, my conlang. That's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, this is episode one, so this is only going to be an introduction and all the phonetical things about the language. So, yeah, I'm going to get into all the nitty gritty and all that. You know, I'm going to get into the grammar uh, in later episodes, so just stick with me here. We got to go over the sounds first. You got to know how to pronounce the language. Well, first of all, we actually have to know what the language is. Um, I basically have this calm world that I'm wanting to make called Platom, which, is, which really that's just... It's just a proto haythic word for planet, but kind of modified, so, yeah. Uh, the, the per, this language, proto haythic it is the head of the Haythic language family, which I, I still need to make all that, but, you know, this is a proto-language, I'm making this first, because I'm smart. Uh, and this language family will actually contain, like, pretty much all the languages, except for this one chain of islands that will have its own language family, because isolation. It's like Japanese! <laughs> um, and yeah, it was a native language for around 300 years, I think, before it diverged into the many branches of the language family. So, and we're going to immediately switch over to phonetics, because why not? Here's the consonants! Yes, I am horrible at making tables! Thank you for asking! Uh... Yeah. Um... I've decided- I decided to go with, uh... Palatal- palatalized versions of the- of all of the plosives. I only did one labial consonant, and that was the K. The I was the I, lab, I labialized the unvoiced velar plosive, which is the k sound you. That that's what you say whenever you say quit. Qu, 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 qu. Yeah, mix it with the uvular that sound. That's not even in here. Um. So yeah, all the sounds are p, 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 t, k, d, k, k, k. G, G, M, N, Th, Z, S, Z, W, Y, L. That's all the consonants in the language. I was kind of, whenever I was making this conlang, I was basing the consonant inventory off of Proto Indo European, actually, or at least what it said it was on the. Uh, Wikipedia page. Wikipedia is not exactly trustworthy, but I mean, hey, that's the only source I can find. So, sorry. Um, and if we go into the vowels, oh, hey, look, it's a five vowel system. But there's also, uh, for, well, actually, I should probably go ahead and say what the vowels are. It's a, e, i, o, u. And there's actually long versions of of three of them, uh, th we also got A, E, and U, which are long, they're supposed to be kind of lengthened, you know, they're long vowels, and we got a bunch of diphthongs down here, I, I, O, A, L, L, <laughs> uh, Ye, O, Wa, we, uo. Those are my thongs. And then on to the funnel tactics. And I still haven't corrected that. Why must you do me this way, autocorrect? Why? Um, so syllables follow this very specific formula, I guess you could call it. I... Uh, you put any consonant except for a palatalized or labialized stop. Uh, well, you can put those there, but you won't be able to use these alongside of it. You know, it does not cluster, as it says right here. Uh, you put 
a so you put a a consonant there, except for one of these, and then if you want to, you can, and then if needed, you cluster it with one of those. Then you have your vowel or diphthong or a long vowel, and then you have a consonant at the end, which would be the coda. This this would be the the first two, would, the first consonant and the sazahamanila. Uh, that would be the onset. Then the two vowels that would be the nucleus, and the final consonant would be the uh, wrong button up. Uh, I went bit. There we go. Ah, no. Let's uh, do a scroll rule. Um, the constants listed there can only be put there, but they don't have to cluster. Uh, ya does not cluster. It can only go in the onset. And and putting ya with e would just give you e, because ye, 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 you can't really do that. It just sounds like E, so might as well put that in the phone of tactics. Say with woo, woo. It, it it's still basically the same sound. I guess that's why they also call them suddenly vowels. <laughs> um, also, words cannot begin with M, N, or or H. So I'm sorry, Miss Hardesty, and I am sorry, uh. Zompus, because your first name is Mark, according to the fronts of your books that I used. <laughs> so yeah, sorry, you're gonna have to change your name to Ark. Or Ark. Actually, no, you, you, How would I translate this dude's name? I'd have to figure this out. Uh, and also, a word cannot be entirely made out of vowels unless it's only one syllable. If it's more than one syllable and you want it to be all vowels, then you'd have to put, then you wouldn't be able to do that. You'd have to put a consonant in between them unless you can diphthong, in which case it would be one syllable, but even then. Uh, now we can move on to prosody. No. No, that went that way. Wow, my computer is taking a poop, clearly. Hello? And Proto-Ethic is syllable time, similarly to Spanish and French. If you don't know what that means, it basically means... Uh... Based on the syllables, it's how you time it. You know, English is stress... It's stress-timed. Uh, depending on the stresses of the different syllables, that's how you time the word. But here it's based on, you know, the actual syllables themselves. Um, and as for the stress rules, the first syllable in a word that is three syllables or more is always stressed. And in that same kind of word, the, syllab the last syllable is only stressed if it ends in a consonant. Otherwise, it's the second or la second or last syllable. Uh, I think they have a specific name for the second and last syllable. I forgot it, so that's why I didn't put it. Um, duosyllabic words, or two-syllable words, are not stressed at all. So, yeah. And monosyllabic words are always stressed, no matter what. Um, and on another thing, even if it doesn't go with the other rules... If the syllable has a long vowel, that will be stressed. It does not matter if it's the first or second or last or last. It's going to be stressed if it's a long vowel. And that's Simba, the kitty, who is a little bit crazy. Hello, Simba. What you doing? Pet your head. Uh... And this slide pretty much says it all. This is the end of the video. I'll bring y'all episode two whenever I get that presentation made. I'm gonna pick this cat up. Urgh! Yes. Hmm. Yeah, I'll talk. I'll be. I'll start talking about morpho morph <laughs> morphology in the next episode. Along with, and you know, we're gonna go along with that for a while. Then we're gonna get the syntax, and then after that, I don't really have anything else. I, I still haven't done the semantics or the pragmatics. But then again, who cares? Uh, which thing? I don't really think I need to do semantics. It went part. 
whatever, just read the, read the slide, and I guess I'll put a thing right there so you can just click it. Like, right... Why did I set it to not do my mouse pointer? Oh, well, I guess I probably just didn't want to obstruct it, but I'm probably going to put a thing, like, right under the text, probably. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Subscribe to more, uh, for future episodes to this thing, if you're interested in it. And... Den un dia genial. That's Spanish for have an awesome day. Adios.